I'll let him take it away, but uh, we've had one of his colleagues come the last few years, and uh, th th this is just great stuff for you guys to learn about. So uh, go ahead, yeah. Jonathan, take it away. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for the introduction. Um, like I said, I'm Jonathan. Um, we work with companies kind of with their digital marketing, pretty much everything online. So today is pretty much going to kind of see, one, what it is you're currently doing, and kind of do a little self-assessment on yourself, and then also what you could be doing as far as best practices for realtors in the area. So, um, first things first, who, uh, you guys, it's going to be kind of more participation stuff too, who actually has like a Google page, Facebook page for your sons? Do you guys I, have I don't have a Google page, I have a Facebook page. Okay, that's perfect, that's fine. Yeah. You've got Google, Facebook? I don't have Google, but I do have Facebook, LinkedIn, okay. uh, you know, all those. Perfect, awesome. So, that is one thing we're going to kind of go through. A lot of times with realtors, there's so many different platforms, so many different things between Google, Facebook, Zillow, Realtor.com, places like that. It's hard to figure out what's going to make the biggest difference and the biggest impact on getting potential clients and buyers and sellers. So um, the next question is, when you guys are doing things, are you guys mostly buyers or sellers? I work about 80% with buyers. Okay. I'm going to do agents, so I have okay. that right So we'll figure it out as we go. <laughs> Okay. Anyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Just plan on buyers to start. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, I know a lot of times with realtors, it's always word of mouth. If you guys do a great job, usually you're going to get referrals. So that's going to be kind of the main way that you guys get things. First thing you want to do, I always say, is kind of own the house. Own your own house and own your own brain. So, people are looking for you. Um, let's say you guys just you know, help me with my purchase. We just bought a house. And then my cousins are looking for one. I'm going to give you him your name. We want to make sure when my cousin goes to look for you guys, you look reputable. Because believe it or not, trust value, especially over referral, needs validation these days. It's not like 10, 15 years ago where if I give you a buddy's card and says he's good, you're going to trust it. Anytime my mom tells me the next restaurant, I still have to go validate. I'm on death, but I'm still going to validate. So that's one thing that we like to make sure of is do you own your own brand? Do you have control over your own brand? Um, so here, we'll do kind of a brief, I'll give you an example. I'm not going to pick a realtor because I know you guys are super competitive, so I'm just going to do a basic one. Um, it's kind of similar, so we'll do a mover. Let's say, there we go. So Big Blue Movie is a client of ours. This is what someone says, oh, okay. you should go to my movers, you should pick my guy. Can you get it for you? Oh, okay. This is what you're gonna see. First thing I do is I'm gonna probably Google them just to get the phone number first. Phone number, see pictures, is, are they local? Can they actually do what I want them to do? Do you yeah. have questions now or as we go or no. at the end? We can go now, yeah. Uh, I'm just curious, what uh, percentage of people go to Google right away? I'm guilty as I Google everything. Yeah. Why don't people go to Bing, Yahoo, uh, I don't know, any of the other search engines? What statistics do you have that show that people, they Google? Yeah, what's, great what's, question. What's Bing? Bing? <laughs> <laughs> I think what's it's Yahoo? A, a Microsoft. <laughs> thing. So it's funny, so 97% of people will go to Google. 97 percent wow. oh yes. my god the reason being is just because of clarity and ease of use on access of the answer wow so a lot of times that's what we say all the time google me yeah. you can't big it right. well i guess you can't <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question, you know, but, so the reason is, is because they're validated, it's a little bit easier. So as far as the market shares goes, Google is the main one. Gotcha. We've noticed that higher, like older demographics tend to use like Yahoo or Bing, because that's what's preloaded on like a desktop or a laptop when they first get it. Yeah. But a majority of the time, it's Google. Gotcha, 97%, dang, I never We always say Google's team. Do you know what, like who those groups then are? Are they younger or older? Are they like the old a AOL people and stuff? It's, it's usually older. <laughs> yeah. They're using Yahoo, okay. or it's people who are kind of against Google, and they'll use oh, okay. Google, or they'll use Yahoo, or they'll use something that's like um, more Apple friendly or something like that. Okay. So majority of the time, <laughs> it's going to be Google. Yeah, okay. well, I'm not yeah. So this is the first thing I say is, Google yourself, how would you look if I referred you out? Does your brand match what you represent in person? 
Your online reputation match your in-person reputation. So, do you have good reviews? Are they easy? Is it easy to get in contact with you? Do I have to scroll through things? So that's the first thing to look at is, one, it's completely free to create a Google business page for yourself. You can go in, you can add keywords of residential homes, commercial homes, you can even put in keywords with the township, we can do Mason, I mean, there's, you can control that narrative itself. That's completely free, Google doesn't charge you. They may try to get you to do Google Ads with them, but you don't have to. That's really kind of your choice. Um, so I say, first thing you wanna do is create a Google page and then probably a Facebook page itself. Um, we kind of control that there too. Because that's the next place people are going to go to is either Facebook or Instagram these days for the younger demographic. Instagram uh, is going to be one that people look at a lot. Um, so those three are kind of the big ones that we see. So they don't go to the website. They go to the Facebook or Instagram. They don't go to a website of said realtor or company even. Most of the time, they're not going to go to the website first. It's probably a touch point five or six. Really? The reason being is because this is what they know and what they're they have no idea how to navigate through your website or what's on your website, but they know how Google works, they know how their Facebook feed works, they know how Instagram looks. People want to go to what's easy and what they're used to. No one likes to change. So if you've earned their trust on these platforms, then you've earned the right to go to the website and look through your listings and look through what you want. So, and that, that's one thing that people get caught up in a lot is, my website's great, my website's interactive, I've spent so much money on this, or my domain name, I've had it since 1997. When's the last time you guys ever typed in a domain name? You just don't do it? Yeah, it's got to the point now where if it's, I mean, everything's hyperlink, I can tell you the last time I typed in something, and I do this for a living. <laughs> so, that's one of the first things I tell people is, own your brain, own what people are seeing from word of mouth. So in this area, word of mouth and referrals are key, so make sure you don't lose anyone in the customer journey or right here. I'm just and curious, like Dan, have you ever Googled yourself? Oh, a long time ago. Yeah. Long time ago. Like, have you guys, younger guys, ever yeah. you have Googled yourself? I do. Yeah. Uh, you you do? all the time, man. I'm a good one. Do you? Do you what, what are statistics showing when you ask people have they Googled themselves like in the past year? Is that most people most don't. don't. Most you, especially business owners, they're not going to do it because they're like, oh, I know I'm good. I don't need to look myself up. And it's not enough. It is what it is. Um, but you, a lot of times I say, take time to think of how is your customer going through to find you? How are you going through with customers? It's not like it used to be where you used to get the phone number and it's a quick, easy call. There's got to be validation. you got to look pretty online before you can get that call more than anything. Gotcha. When I would, uh, like early on, like I don't know, 10 years ago when, when some of the stuff was new, some of the tech was new and, and SEO was just kind of starting to come out. I would uh, I would go, I would take my laptop, I would take my phone, I would, you know, take my wife's phone, an iPad. I would go to, whenever I was driving, I would go to different towns and things like that. I would Google my, uh, I, I would Google certain keywords, Cincinnati Realtor or Westchester Real Estate, and then whenever my website came up, like I might have to go seven pages, but I would click on it, and I would, I would go through a couple pages, and that kind of helped me out, you know, with SEO, and then I would ask some relatives to do the same thing. Now there's, now it's so competitive, you know, but back then, 10 years ago, I mean, if you pushed your website, maybe you're on the first page, when somebody searched, you know, Westchester Home for Sale or something like that. So there's definitely some tricks, you know, in, in both of this stuff. And you gotta keep up on it, because everybody's doing it, you know, so. Well, I would say everybody's not doing it. I mean, for you, especially the younger guys here, I mean, you just heard something from our number one agent of ERA Real Solutions on how he drove around the city to Google himself to see, and then he would click on it to boost. I mean, these are things you guys got to be putting in the back of your head. Yeah. Like, or whenever I was at a friend's house or whatever, yeah. you know, or I might have been visiting relatives in Illinois, you know, I'm like, hey, this this will help. Or in Florida on vacation, it's like, hey, let's do it now. Interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's that, yeah, I love that. You know, that's what a lot of people don't think about. It's like the yeah. small details, that's really what kind of the no. cheek here and the small change here, that's what gets you from over that top. Along those lines, whenever I would go cell phone shopping, I wouldn't do it every day, but whenever I go cell phone shopping, I would go to different cell phones and do the same thing because they got different IP addresses and, and different things. 
and now it's a whole nother device that's Google you and all that. So that kind of helped out too. Wow, yeah. that's taking it to another level. You gotta, you on. gotta think outside the box in this business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so wow. I, don't, I don't do it anymore, but it used to help a lot. Hey guys, hey yeah. Rodney. Hi. 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 Yeah, we're, we're, we start at one o'clock. Half hour ago, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next thing would be, oh, here we go. Okay. one is kind of make sure, once you have a Google page, once you have a Facebook page, once you have a few different kind of places, like I, I would even create a listing on Zillow. I would make sure that you're showing up well on Realtor.com. Um, places that you know people are shopping. I would make sure to at least have a free profile and then reviews. That's one thing that's really gonna help. Um, but two different tiers. One, people wanna look at reviews to make sure if you're good and relevant, but then two, Google and other things, other places like Facebook and Instagram are gonna validate your reviews. So if, let's say, to make numbers even, let's say you have 100 reviews on Google, and 20 of them says you're the best commercial realtor in Liberty Township, Google's gonna say, okay, 20 different people just validated what, he, what he's going for, I'm gonna put them a little bit higher on the food chain for commercial realtor. So, pretty look up reviews are huge these days. And what they want through reviews is, it doesn't just have to be clients, it can be a reputation for people. You can use friends, family, um, people that know that you're a quality person, especially with realtors, it doesn't have to be a client. It doesn't have to be someone you've done business with, it has to be just someone who vouches for you. Great, I'm not telling you to go tell all your family and friends to write you a review today, and you can click zero to 20, you're gonna get flagged. But, Keep that in mind, just multiple people can give you reviews. You're not checked if it's valid customer or anything like that. So that's the thing. You're talking like one per week. I mean, that's a great point you just said for these agents here. So are you saying like they can have a friend or family member write a Google review one per week from now until the end of the year? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think if you respond to it too, right, say thanks. Yep. It was great working with you or something, that helps too. It's yeah, great response too, but also you can even kind of tag team with keywords in that response too. Mm. Hey, it was great to say you're on the Liberty Township. If you're ever meeting again, I'd love to meet a realtor in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. You just got realtor, Cincinnati, Liberty Township, you have multiple keywords from just responding. Mm. And if you do the more consistent of we we suggest at least one to two a week of reviews, it's showing that you're free. You're not just fluffing your numbers one day and it doesn't at all. Google wants to see that you're constantly, it's kind of like working out. You have to constantly do it. The more Google sees that you're doing it and you're showing consistency, the higher you're in the push, you'll be more looking for you as well. And then is, is you, you have any insight on like getting a Google number and if, uh, or, or, yeah, I guess getting a Google number and then if, if people search you, they call that number and you pick up, Google ranks you higher, um, you know, naturally, because yeah. they want people that pick up their phone. Absolutely. Yeah. So we, we suggest Google numbers for a few different reasons. One, if you don't have like a 513 number, or if you do business in Cincinnati and like Northern Kentucky, get a Google number for 859 when you have a 513 mm -hmm. number. Um, something like that. And I put it in my phone as Google Voice. You can set it up with Google Voice where, because if you don't set it up right, then it won't show, you don't know if they're calling your Google number or not. But, if you, but I've got a program in my phone as Google Voice. And I've got the, maybe the number that they call from or something. I think yep. you can transfer to Google Voice. I forget how I did it. But every time it says Google Voice is calling, like I pick up because yeah, we it's have a right view. But Google Voice, we answer that. Yeah. Like it's just yeah. Yeah. So yeah. If you see it, you don't know, have to have a little bit of a thing. Pick it up. It's just like opposite. Pick it up. Yeah, I mean, we're in sales. It shows me, okay, I'm answering now. So I, I got that. So that that is kind of the first thing is making sure you own your own. Own what the brand is. So the next one's going to be is now that I've owned it, now that I control it, now that I feel confident about my listing, how do I promote it? So we just talked about kind of branding. Now how do you market? How do you take over the kind of market share of the area itself? So this is. I just did a brief search. I didn't do anything crazy. I actually did it in the parking lot just so I have my location on. This is what shows up currently if I look for a realtor. So if your guys' this industry, you're one of the most competitive industries out there. You guys and insurance are B12 kind of thing. There's 50,000 active realtors in Ohio, right? 
So it's what are you doing to get that edge over each over the next realtor? And this is going to be one thing that a lot of times I've seen with realtors, it's either you're super, super busy and you don't really think of kind of prospecting down the road in your brand, or you try to do it and it's just frustrating because there's a lot of changes, it's constant changing and things. And let's be honest, you get into selling homes to be a digital guy, that's just not what you do. So this is what I tell people is at least sit down with somebody like me, doesn't have to me, but somebody who understands the industry and just have them see what your listings look like. Are your keywords up to date? Are you showing pretty well? How um, are you looking in different directories? And just kind of validate what's working for you guys. You don't always have to pay someone. So most of the time, people in my industry will show you kind of what it is you can do. Um, and it's not super, super hard, it's just tedious. If you want to try to do it a little, if you're kind of bootstrapping and starting on your own, you can do a lot of this um, A lot of realtors that I work with, it's just kind of a time thing. How much is your time um, back for you? And that's what we do. Can you get people up there though in that sponsored area? Yep. You guys can? Yep. I was just going to ask, how, they, how did they get there? Is so it... Google Screen just rolled out about two years ago. So it actually started with Google Guarantee um, with like um, the contracting industry. So like builders, um, plumbers, stuff like that. And it was their way of validating who's a good person, who's not. Who's somebody who's like a storm chaser compared to who's a valid contractor for the most part. And then they had such great results with it, they moved into lawyers and realtors. So what Google screen means is Google's done a background check, Google's verified, and Google says this person has their opinion. They like that realtor. That is somebody that they can vouch for and they would offer to you. Granted, it isn't. Those are paper clicks. Actually, that's not even a paper click, that's a paper lead. Um, so that's a new thing as well. A lot of times with Google, you've heard like PPC or paper per click. Um, that would be something done here, but Google said, you know what? A lot of times with realtors, because you guys are so competitive, people will just click and click and click and click and click on your ads, mm -hmm. and you would say, okay, I got all these clicks, but I don't really get it. Like other realtors will do that? Yep. Yeah, I've done that too. I'm like this is I'm like this is shady. I'm not gonna keep doing that. <laughs> but that's one thing that they got feedback from was like, okay, I spent all this money. You said I had all these impressions, or you said my numbers were great, but I didn't get any phone calls. I didn't get any actual new clients. So that's what Google Screen is. It's you are gonna have to pay per lead, but it has to be a legit lead. You can go through with Google and hey, that actually was just a robo dialer, or hey, that wasn't real. Uh, I'm not paying for that compared to, no, that wasn't good. How many do you think are up there? How many do you think they'll allow in like one area? Like say, ro rotate through? Is it just three or? Oh, so these, this is everyone in Google screen in this area. Oh yeah. Anyone okay. with a green oh. check mark? Yeah. Wow. So you can't get up there organically. You have to pay to be up there. You got to pay there. Okay. Yep. What does it cost? Yeah, I was just going to say. Do you have any idea? It really varies um, because your guys' industry is super competitive, uh, and the ROI is higher for you guys. We usually suggest if you're going to do pay per lead or Google screen, we wouldn't suggest anything lower than about twenty five per month, just because your guys' industry is so great. And how? Realtors and then also bro like brokerages itself. Yeah. <coughs> so what, do you what, what do you think we'd see from that? We'll the ROI from it? Yeah. It really varies. I say, I usually tell clients if you're spending that amount of money, you want to kind of look through kind of a three to six month range of, all right, if I'm going to invest six months worth of here, how much do I need to make back? Does it make sense? We usually see if you're spending 2500 probably. Three to four a month, give or take. Clients kind of reaching out. No problem. Legit. Do you think all those guys on that list are spending twenty five hundred a month? Probably not. No, not the ones at the bottom. No. Yeah, they're probably paying less for those leads, kind of thing. Oh, there he is. I'm paying home snap to be up there. Home oh, snap, yeah. You're paying home snap. Yeah. So talk to us about that. Why? Are, how do we know those who are those other people playing, paying homes? I'm not getting any calls. I'm only paying about 900 a month. Yeah. So I'm, it, I'm it, it's this a month, bidding war still on here. Yeah. So because it still is competitive, it's still a bidding war itself. So that's why we say 2500 is because the cost to get towards the high, 
higher ones are yeah. really, really valid. Um, if we're going to pay, I want to get you leads. I don't want to only spend three, four hundred bucks and you don't get anything at all. I've never been at the top. I've always been near the bottom. Well, if you close at 10 p.m., like that says, that's why. Sure. Why isn't Vaz Realty open 24 7, baby? I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah, yeah, I don't either. I'd pass the ads to go down. That's fair. That's fair. Why is that? Why do, why do we do that? Uh, so, one, you guys don't want to feel like you're being bought. Yeah. Okay. That's what they say. Yep. Gotcha. So, like, let's fundamentally look at the ads. Let's say you have a good product, and somebody's going to pay money to give you the look. They're going to make sure that I see exactly what I want to see. But, uh, I can also see the other way. So, I used to be the exact same. But, now, I'm <laughs> Do people go to the organic session because they think that those those uh, providers have earned their spot yeah. there? Yep. Okay. And, and Is that why you go there? You these think places too, you do have to earn that spot. So Google looks at about 70 different directories. So it's Yahoo, it's Bing, it's Yelp, it's um, Realtors.com, it's Chamber of Commerce, Matt Plus. And the more times you show up, um, kind of consistent, same name, same contact address, Contact information, address, and keywords, the higher they put you up on the future. That's how that's one of the things that we work with with small businesses, making sure all of those listings are congruent and they're showing the exact same keyword, but we're also optimizing them based off of feedback. So, for instance, my phone book, you should have an example again. He's showing here, it's probably um, they probably got really good data, but we would ask, okay, are you getting commercial calls? No, I'm not getting any showing you how a few people reach out or click for commercial here in this area, but you're getting more residential calls in Mason. Did you get anything in Mason? Yes, I got the Mason call, but I didn't get anything. Okay, cool. We would turn this into a negative keyword in this area. We put more emphasis in Mason for residential because that's what works right now. So you have to be intentional. It's not just set it and forget it to earn this keep right here. So, like I said, he's showing up for commercial when I did we go back to just the organic. Team Bush. Oh. They don't even have. Uh, Is that the right one? Oh, Team Bush shells, yeah. Yeah. Where are they at, Kevin? They, they were out of here for many years. Who are they? Their service, their service yeah, program. can you go back to that? Uh, Team Bush is on ERA, um, yeah. right there. Where, who are on-site services? What's that? It means you can come in person. Can you tell who's who's uh, helping them get up there? Uh, maybe. They got a picture of this place. It's just a Google picture. Oh, I see. Okay. Car. Oh, they got this address. 
No, it doesn't show me. Oh. It just goes straight to figure out the site. Hmm. How long have they been around? Since the beginning, 2011, okay. what, Mike? Uh, yeah. 2011? I mean, since, uh, yeah. That could also be it, just the longevity of the big thing here, other than valid. Um, oh, does that look organic? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the check marks are the ones people are paying. These down here, Donna D was the first organic. And that's not based on the number of reviews though, right? Because some of those reviews only had six, five, but the other one had 72. So yeah, what's the, the yeah, with, with so that I few reviews. Where, like I said, there's a percentage of everything that works into it. So reviews are taking into account about 20% of it. But then the rest is going to be, how are you looking on those other platforms? Are you being validated on the other platforms? A lot of times, if I've been in the same location for 20 years, there's no inconsistency to everything. A lot of those directories, they go out, their main job of their directory is to find information that they think is valid. So mathpress.com, their number one job is to make sure that when they're giving you directions, they're giving you directions to the right place. So they're gonna go out kind of with their spiders to make sure, okay, is that location still the same location? Okay, is this still the same contact information, the same address? So if you've been in this location for 20 years and there hasn't been any changes, Meanwhile, that's one thing that we help with other companies that haven't been there for this long is, okay, how do we make sure that's all up to date, but also how do we optimize and stay consistent too? Does it help because they're out of this location and you are in this location searching for them? Yep, that's so why I want to do in the park. Proximity helps, okay. yeah. Yep. And then Donna Deaton's right around the corner, so she's organically up there. Yep. Uh, uh, yep. So, like I said, there's a lot of different things that go into. You could go a mile away. It's, could change totally, totally different. Different, right? And I can even do this search in another hour, and it's going to, here, let me do that. Let me refresh it. Let me see if I get the same things. I don't. They change this constantly. Mm -hmm. Take most shells from third to second. Wow. It's always changing. It's constantly evolving. That's why a lot of times I tell my clients, we're never going to promise over one. There's too many different variables that go in it, different IP addresses, different search histories, different locations. Um, but our goal is to make you top three to five, and you have enough reviews where it's going to validate you. And then if the customer journey is easy enough, people are going to choose you. So one, you want to be found, you want to be chosen, and you want to be easy to work with. How do you do that? Same thing with Facebook. If you're searching on Facebook, or if you're looking up a business page, are you guys showing relevant content that I want to see? So it's not just sell, 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 but are you promoting homes on your Facebook page that you would like more of? If I'm buying a house, I want to see my realtor is used to buying and selling houses that I want to be in. So if it's a $150,000 house, but I need to buy a $350,000 house, I'm gonna kind of question a little bit, are you used to that type of process? So that's where the marketing comes into play. Everything has to be intentional. If you're gonna spend time and you're gonna spend money, be intentional about what you're putting out there. And then also, if you are putting things out there, everything online is a data point. Every place has feedback, every place has numbers. Look at those numbers and see if it's actually working for you. So if you're looking on Google, is it like we just showed up for number one for commercial right here? He's not getting anything commercial. How do we fix that? How do we change that? If you're not showing up for residential, but you want more residential, how do we fix that? How do we change that? You need to adapt. And not just say, okay, numbers are, they are what they are. How do you adapt? That's probably the biggest thing that I had, It's just kind of how do you control that? There's also a lot more we can go in depth with. Obviously, Google Screen is one you can do. You know, Facebook ads, we can do, you can do retargeting, things like that, but kind of starting small, build your base, own your home, own your pages and your brand, and then start being intentional about how you want to be perceived or grabbing more business. What do you like, what do you dislike, and come up with an idea of, okay, I want to be the number one guy that sells 
$250,000 homes in this area. How do I build my entire marketing plan around that? So, like his says open 24 7, and then theirs says open till 9 and 8. Does the 24 7, would that help you in the algorithm? Honestly, probably not. Because if I call him at 10 o'clock tonight and he doesn't answer, he's going to be dinged. <laughs> I don't want nobody calling me after him. So. <laughs> we should all call that guy at 10 p.m. tonight. <laughs> So what would you recommend for agents, say they wanted to work with you on boosting this? Like, What is the plan? What does that look like? What do you do in the first meeting, the second meeting? What, what does that entail? Yeah, so the first thing we do is we kind of do a gut diagnostic scan of seeing just how you look so far currently. What it is you're doing, are you work with other providers? If so, what's worked in the past? How does that work? Then the next thing we will do is if you haven't really done too much and we're kind of starting from scratch, or if you've like moved brokerages and there's inconsistencies, we would want to clean that up first. We want to make sure it's not showing Remax everywhere. We want to make sure your brand is consistent. Um, and then also we want to get data from those two. So they have to pay per click here, or pay per lead. PPC ads, you pay per click. So those can get pretty expensive. This is all organic. I can click on these 100 times. You don't have to pay for that. So this is where we prefer to start with. One, let's get this optimized and let's get data from here. Let's make sure we know exactly what we like and what we don't like as far as people interacting on our pages. Then after about a month or two, once we start getting access to those directories, optimizing them, um, getting feedback from that data, it's kind of learning you, you're learning us, then we go into more aggressive um, pay-per-click campaigns or retargeting campaigns or the Google screen process as well. So the way that we see it is, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to say, okay, here's $5,000, figure it out from the start. For us, you're just gonna be throwing away money if it's not intentional. We'd say, okay, let's own this first, let's earn your trust, and then once we understand exactly what we want, it's less of a sawed off shotgun and more like a sniper rifle. I know exactly when and where and who I want, what demographics, what time of day, and they also have the same similar TV shows that they like, like Blue Bloods, I'm gonna hit that. <laughs> It's super creepy, but you can do it. Any questions? All right, well, thanks, Jonathan. I appreciate that. Uh, that was fantastic. And if you guys have any other questions, kind of one-off or anything like that, I'll give out my business cards. Uh, I'm local here. Like I said, I live in Louisville, Kentucky, but I'm 